all right wonderful people welcome back to this wonderful channel where we'll bring you back to back update and information as city hot let's go down to the news information of the day my big congratulations to the president of america donald trump of umuchineke a man who has stood by the principle of chuku okika biyama and a man who has the interest of biafrans at heart uh, and i believe that as uh, Mazi Donald Trump has taken over office. Uh, I think it's high time for him to rise up and say, uh, let Biafra people go. Let him be the Moses and release the children of Israel from the bondage of Pharaoh of the Egyptians. Uh, as see the be, uh, information will drop from my table. be said this Prime Minister of the Biafra Republic government in exile, Mazi Simon Eba, has written to Finland president over biafra declaration uh, unlike uh, other african countries or unlike african countries uh, you see as um this issue of uh, uh biafra is moving forward in finland and uh, there has been a lot of letters that has been written by the nigerian government the nigeria house of senate the house of assembly members even um ambassadors to finland to make sure uh, that EPA is handicapped or by is captured uh, but these people have forgotten that a uh, white man does not think like black man because uh, if white man thinks like black man i don't think that by now a uh, black man would have gotten his independence a lot of african countries and a lot of south american and other countries that uh, got their independence uh, i don't think that that uh, would have happened by now because uh, most of these white people they believe in what is written in paper uh, once you are able to break that code or be able to find out what is written about you in a paper uh, the white man gives you the freedom to exercise your rights it took martin luther king a lot of years protest and the rest of them uh, to be able to alleviate the black people of america uh, from the bondage of not associating with the white those days in america you find out that um around the 1940 and the rest of them uh, during the time of martin luther king and the rest of them you find out that um the when a white man enters a bus uh, a black man is supposed to stand up so that a white man can sit down and places like michigan alabama and the rest of them uh, there were no blacks there because uh, the, even if a black man and try to come up or associate with the white white some of them were lynched but when people like Martin Luther King Jr. and a lot of other people, people like Abraham Lincoln and the rest of them, who stood up and made sure that um, self-right is legal for everyone, that people have the right to associate, the right to religion, the right to, uh, right to speech, and the rest of them, they are, uh, many people were liberated. A lot of people were liberated. And that was what happened. Meanwhile, as it de be, as it de be, as it de be, um, Simon Eba has written to the Finland government. Let's go down to that information. Uh, Simon Eba, led Biafra Republic government in exile, has written to Finland President Alexander Stubb over the group's announced Biafra Declaration Convention. Eba, in a statement on Wednesday through X, noted that the letter of intent was presented on Monday to Finland President Alexander Stubb. According to Eba, the letter detailed just justification on why the Biafra Declaration is a recipe for peace in Nigeria and Sahel region of Africa. The letter of intent informed the Finland President to support the Biafra Independent Declaration because it is a recipe for peace in the Sahel region. Eba wrote on his official X account, The government of Biafra is contacting you to inform you about the overall aims and goals of the Biafra Republic government in exile and its international legal personality and the pending restoration of the United States of Biafra under the auspice of an internationally recognized referendum to be concluded the last week of november 2024 unlike other sessionist governments in africa before and since 
Biafra was recognized by five United Nations member states. The letter reads in part, This comes amid the increased agitation for Biafra independence in the past years. EBA had announced that from November 29 to 3rd, 2024, Biafra independence will be declared in the convention in a convention in Finland. Record that Namde Kanu, the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, has been under detention since 2021 over Biafra agitation. Efforts and appeal from several Igbo leaders for his freedom have not yielded fruit. All right, welcome back. Uh, this is a letter uh, written to the uh, Finland president, Stop by uh, Mazi Simon Eba, the prime minister of the Biafra Republic government in exile as EDB. You know, Shele, uh, I think um, that Eba is actually taking this uh, movement very, very serious. Um, I, and I think that this is not like every other movement that have come before now uh, to liberate the the indigenous people of Biafra. Uh, there has been a lot of movements. Ojuku came and go. Uh, Owazurike, who later joined the Nigeria party and as if his own movement, the Masop, has now been registered under Nigeria. Uh, they are even doing security work everywhere. Masop members, uh, you can hire them to do security for you and the rest of them. And after that, a lot of people came up, people like him are powerful. And also, a man and the canon who started the the last part of the game, you know, that ignited uh, the fire of freedom. That was when a lot of Igbo people started speaking out. Uh, even some governmental parastatals supported some governmental officials and the rest of them who were, you know, pioneering this thing on the ground, even though there are some selfish politicians who knew that uh, if this happens to come to limelight, uh, that they are going to lose their political position, people like senators, governors, and the rest of them who are kicking against this thing from behind, uh, who are just fighting for their own personal interest, even the office that have been given to them, the voted office they are occupying as the governors, the president, uh, the senators, they have, been, they have not been able to do anything for the masses. Yes, they have not been able to do anything good for the masses because uh, as, as far as, as far as, um, uh, uh, what is it called? As far as Nigeria is concerned, as far as Biafra is concerned, the politicians we have have not been able to do any reasonable thing that have actually affected the life of the people. Nothing has been done in the interest of the masses. Imagine in, in, in a state in the northern part of Nigeria where uh, the, the governor of that state said that they built, uh, I think, how many boreholes with 1.2 billion naira. Only boreholes, building of boreholes, we are done with 1.2 billion, and um, I think about 20 something boreholes or thereabout. And these politicians somehow they, they feel that uh, Nigerians or the citizens that are under them, they are subjects, the populace, that these people are fools, that they are mumu, they don't even know what they are doing because. Uh, the way they are bringing out the, the, the expenditure, expecting us to accept these things wholeheartedly, expecting us to accept it hook, line, and sinker, I think, um, I think um, it, 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 it's appalling. It's painful. It's very, very painful. And that is why um, a lot of people have decided that the movement that will bring about the actualization of the indigenous people of Biafra should be taken serious. Um, people like Simon Eba are making moves, making sure uh, 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 that these things come to pass. Meanwhile, let's go to other information as government don't buy people for one obodo like that. Uh, it will be any good state. They say four government shot dead in Enugu State. Let's go down to the full detail of the information as I go to edition out to you one by one. Remember that that is my work here for you. 
uh, to make sure that you get all the all the necessary information you need. As the security squad comprising the Nigerian Army, the police and the DSS personnel also recovered a catch of arms and ammunition from gunmen, while some of them fled into the bush with various degree of gunshot injuries. The men, the elements, were intercepted in the early hours of Wednesday and overpowered by operative of Eha Alumona in Nsoka local government area while hatching sinister plans of attacking some parts of the state, including the metropolis. It was reported that an ESN commander who has been operating from neighboring state was arrested after hours of intense gun duel between the operatives and the men of the underworld. According to the source, the ESN commander who had been on the wanted list led the security operatives to their hideout where they stacked their arms, charms, and under other dangerous objects. Meanwhile, the two security personnel who sustained minor injuries during the exchange of fire are presently receiving treatment and have been confirmed to be in stable condition. It will be recalled that the Enugu State Governor Barista Pitamba had vowed to flush out evil elements and hoodlums behind insecurity in the state through the ongoing security reforms which include the establishment of distress response squad, massive investment in the state command and control center, surveillance security system, and modern technology aimed at intercepting and eliminating all forms of security threat. Uh, Pete and Bayou have tried. And secondly, the matter now is that um, every single thing that happens now, uh, they name them IPOB. If they catch thief, they name them IPOB ESM. Every, every, every. Uh, Pete and Bayou said that he's going to. Uh, create a distress response, uh, distress response squad, a uh, massive investment in state command and control center, surveillance security system, and modern technology in and intercepting and eliminating all forms for security. Yes, uh, you want to install a, a, a surveillance security system and the modern technology. <laughs> Meanwhile, roads that are leading so, to some villages in Enugu State has not been built, especially those places that uh, they, are, they are doing a lot of farm work, uh, that these people you are supposed to give them a good road so that after uh, you know harvesting their farm produce, they will be able to bring it easily into the city and sell it and make their money. Uh, but these people are looking at putting cameras and the rest of them. That's another means of eating the nation's money. And when they put this camera now, they will be telling us they do it with 100 billion. <laughs> Meanwhile, this is where I'll be winding on the cutting for the day. If this is your first time, kindly go ahead and sub, like, comment, share. Thank you for listening. God bless. How to defend our land? It is in the public. We're not hiding it. So you judge by yourself. So anybody coming to say someone ekpa be open or someone ekpa, the person is not telling himself or herself truth. What open do you want me to be? I want me to tell you how I sleep and snore in my bed. Before you know, I'm telling you the truth. I don't know. You know, if you that's what you're expecting, my brother, you wait till that came and come. But anything that has to do with this Biafra, you are going to have it. It is on the it is in the public, public domain. So you can judge the what if you have followed this particular space from the beginning, you can judge from what other people have done in the past and what we are doing today. And then you can be the judge. From that, if you are convinced, you if you don't convince, we we'll wait for you somewhere where we'll use tax, we'll be seen. We use taxation to bob your hair. Thank you for not supporting BF. Thank, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, uh, PM, mm -hmm. <laughs> PM, mm -hmm. do you know? Do you know if we, we have a, the at least a best A defense system than Iran? <laughs> they don't have. A, they don't have. Is <laughs> Israel went to Iran and came back with testimony? And Nigeria will come to us and <laughs> and they go back with the lamentation. They don't have idea. They don't have idea of that. They don't have idea. All right, we go to Veteran Dragon. Good evening. Yeah, uh, thank you, my Honorable Minister of Information, Maze Akwarawa, Honorable Akwarawa. Thank you so much. And uh, Deputy Minister uh, Raphael, I salute you. I salute all the ministers on space. My Prime Minister, Honorable Prime Minister, I salute you. I stand in attention and I salute you in the military way. 
Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I didn't. I didn't start. I didn't listen to your opening speech, so I, I will go back later to listen to what you said. Mm -hmm. There is something I want to mention. Um, I never. I've never shivered or or f worried or bothered either during the civil war or now. But there was a time I really was shivered in this struggle, and I want to mention it. That was when you said you were looking for. 20 million votes. I was, the thing really bothered me. I said, where are we going to get 20 million votes? I, I said, why didn't you ask for, since, since we were, we were, we were match, trying to match 4 million, why didn't you ask for 7 million, 8 million? You asked for 20 million votes. Hey, that thing really pushed me. I didn't really, I was very, very uncomfortable. But alas, at the end, we are having over 50 million votes mandating you to go on and give us Biafra. 50 million votes. I, you really surprised me. You really surprised me. And I want to sing a song which is a familiar song you've been singing. Let me just sing it because I, after that, after you announced 50 million votes, I said, wow, you are too much. And God is with you. Oh, Simon, Simon, my Prime Minister, I thank you. I can't ask you a question. What am I going to ask you? I am following everything you are doing. I'm listening to you. Now you are speaking to us. I can, God will, by now, God will now give me grace. I can now sleep well. I even want if he can be talking to us every day. I mean, that, that, will be, that will be healing to my body. So thank you so much for what you are doing. We are with you. We are looking forward to December 2nd when we are going to redeclare our sovereignty and then we generate that document which will be signed by delegates the document that will, 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 will become an instrument that biafra has been redeclared thank you so much your template is touch not it's unbeatable nigeria is dead the funeral is about to be conducted who we'll all be there to to have the service of songs and finally bury Nigeria. Thank you so much for what you are doing for us. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we go to Tosi. Tosi with um, Elon Musk's uh, photo on your profile. Over to you. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. I'm so honored to be here among the honorable men here. Um, I have some few questions to ask as a young and vibrant Biafran citizen. I'm just 23 and I'm very interested in, uh, interested in history stuff and all those, all those things. So, though my question is nothing related to what has been discussed here. Or anything, but I have some few things bothering me, which I would like to be cleared of, like to know what is really happening and to know what I'm about to fight for, to know what the freedom is all about. Like I've been watching uh, so many news online, so many I've been following history all all over the world and Israel. Is one of the countries that 
are similar to what Nigeria is doing to Biafra people. Then, when I come across Biafra flag, seeing it standing next to Israel flag, it bothers me a lot. So I want to know what Biafra has in common with Israel. That's my first question. Please, if you should just pardon my manner, so anyway, I start to ask the question, but I need to be clear about this, to know what we are fighting for, and to know what I'm fighting for too, because I need that freedom. I need it. And I can fight to the last drop of my blood to get it. You understand? So that's what I, I just want to know. All right, you want to know the relation between Biafra and uh, Israel? Yeah. All right, so Biafra, uh, in as much as I wouldn't go, I wouldn't want to go into religion, teaching, and uh, cultural or origin. Uh, Biafra people are believed to be the Jews, the lost tribe of Israel, just like we have them in other parts of Africa as well, in Ethiopia, for example. Unfortunately, our uh, Ethiopia has been recognized by Israel and they even have uh, free access to Israel. They can travel to Israel and all that. Our own has been meeting brick uh, wall because of the, the Ishmael descendant in Nigeria that the British possibly join us together, which is the Northern Usman Danfodio descendant, as you all know. They never, they don't want to see anything anything in Israel, you know, really the history in the Bible. So it is reality. And that is the reason they hate you. So that's the reason why they don't want to see the world. What you see going on today in the Middle East is something we are facing. So it is that uh, uh, connection, that blood connection, that covenant is what they are fighting. So when you see them going against you in Nigeria, hating you, it is just like that. It is a spiritual thing that is beyond your understanding. So they have no other reason to hate you other than the light that is shining in you as a Jew. Even though some people who is sitting there with you probably who are one Nigeria, once you have once you have the spirit of one Nigeria, you will even be seeing somebody who is from the same village with you, who's supposed to be calling himself a Jew, will continue to fight you. Say, come and go and sit down. You are an idiot. Which a Jew? Who, 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 who go back to Israel now? You know, stuff like that. So it is a connection that uh, we have and a covenant that we have. And then also our culture, for you to confirm that that is true, our culture is the same. Our way of life is the same. And so we see ourselves as the descendant of the Jews. That is the connection we have. Of course, some people can give you more deeper explanation to the connection between us and Israel. So we are the Jews. That is a lost tribe of of. Uh, of the Jews in the West Africa and, of course, in Nigeria. And like I said, we are not the only people that are the lost tribe of uh, Judah or Israel. There are many of them across Africa. And if you don't know, when you hear Israel, when you hear what is in the Bible, it did not happen in the United States. The history of the Bible is in Africa. Egypt is in Africa. If you, in case if you don't know, you are still 22 years. So Egypt is in Africa. So we are actually very close to God and to Jesus than any other that people in America. I don't know whether you are aware of that. Yeah, I'm aware. All right. So just uh, just to give you a very brief uh, one. So we see ourselves as as Jews, and nobody should come and dispute and dispute who we are. You, you know that is who we are, and uh, we accept that particular uh, you know history. I accept it. I don't know about you. So you should respect my own opinion about myself. What I say about myself is what you should believe. Thank you. Okay. I, I still have one more Go ahead. Question. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I read what you say. My next question is, um, I believe that um, Israel is a friend to NATO, right? And Nigeria is also a friend to NATO. Then, we are fighting a war. A NATO country. I think therefore I should either do the opposite. Like, forming up with 
other are you, are you are you asking a question or you are making a suggestion which one okay um uh, it's also a question and a suggestion just i'm just saying my mind i'm just literally like this thing has been bothering me for a long which is i'm i'm also interested in everything that you do. I'm, i've been following you i've been doing everything i've been following the history so i just want to know and I'm uh, I'm I'm also putting out the suggestion. That right, your, suge your suggestion have been noted. Okay. Is there another, is there another thing you want to say? No, nothing much. It's just this. Not because uh, you didn't ask question. Okay, no problem. Nothing. I'm done. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Tosin. We go to the next. Uh, speaker but but, uh, but uh, uh, sorry uh minister yes sir minister let's correct this uh this impression they will now say it uh, it happened in our space please nigeria is not a member of a nato nation <laughs> Neither nigeria is a member of a brick nation <laughs> uh <-huh>. so <laughs> minister, <laughs> Minister <laughs> Nigeria is I neither boot of this. I didn't even and, want to fuel anything from what they uh -huh, And uh, you should not make a mistake. We are we are ever vigilant. We ha we know what happened <laughs> to us in 67, 70. We are Egypt and Russia. We are the helping hand Nigeria has in bombing our people. We cannot afford to make such mistakes again. So we are very, very vigilant. And I call the Prime Minister, follow him up. But Nigeria is not a NATO nation, neither a BRICS nation. Thank you. Th thank you, Minister Success. Since you have decided to puncture the tire, <laughs> I didn't want to <laughs> respond to this guy because uh, when he said he's of 22, and then uh, he has been following up everything and this and that, and then the only question you wanted to hear or to ask is because you saw Biafra Defense Forces coming out with Biafra flag. And what Nigeria have told you, why should they carry Israel flag? But you did not come to ask, why did the Northern Youth wave Russia flag? It is that of Biafra and Israel that they tell you, go and be looking for why they should come and ask. So we have to move on because uh, at times when we expand on many things, we give credence to the enemies of Biafra. <laughs> so comrade, comrade, Udeka Emmanuel, over to you. Thank you very much, my Prime Minister. Thank you very much, uh, Commissioner, I mean, uh, Minister for Information. My Prime Minister, God will bless you. God will bless you. You are the true disciple of Martin Namdekano. I don't care what the Chinchi and the Nzama people are saying about you. You are blessed. And God will continue to bless and protect you for us. You see? Yeah. I want to also thank God for the life of those who are paying the ultimate price, who, those who, men on ground who are loyal to you, who are listening to you. God will continue to bless and protect them in Jesus' name. Uh, my Your network don't take light to. Comrade Emmanuel, your network don't take light to. We can't hear you anymore. All right, we go to the next speaker. When you return, you can take the mic again. Mr. Editor. Mr. Editor. All right, wonderful people. Welcome back to this wonderful channel where we'll bring you back-to-back -back update and information as you hold. In case it's your first time of joining us on this wonderful channel, uh, kindly go ahead and subscribe, like, comment, share, and also remember to all your notification button so that whenever our news drop, go be the first. We'll collect them. Let's go down to the news proper as in the hot. Uh, I'm going to bring you proper information. Uh, we'll say in consignment and the canvas release. Uh, we'll be Ahmadike one of Ndibo. Okay. Uh, before I continue, I know that um, a lot of people who has passed through similar uh, issue with Mazen and the canon on this um, Biafra struggle succumbed. They gave up. The Kano uh, has not been the first person, or was not the first person, uh, to go for prison into the prison because of the Biafra struggle. Uh, a lot of people has been there. The founder of Masob and the rest of them, uh, who surrendered along the line, came out and become uh, billionaires. But Kano 
uh, has maintained his stand. And I will say kudos to a good man and a man who stands for the right of everybody. Meanwhile, as CDB, Nam the Kano finally meets Lego team as DSS DG lifts restriction. After much agitation, Director General of the Department of State Service DSS Adeola Ajayi lifted the restriction on Nam the Kano, leader of the Indigenous People of Biafra IPOB. Kano's Lego team, led by late council Aloy Ejimako, met with the Biafra agitator at the DSS facility in Abuja. Ejimako said the intervention of the House of Representative members from Ikuano Umwahia North and South Federal Constituency of Gocha was instrumental in DSS lifting the restriction. Posting on X, Ejimako wrote, Today, on the directive of the DG DSS, the MNK Lego team conducted the first successful visitation with Mazin and the Kano since September 27th. Mazin Ndidi Ahorum, who came from the US, was with us. Our Ramrod Lego Forays and Honorable Obi Agocha's intervention were crucial to the outcome. DSS had blocked Kano from having access to his Lego team after he caused an opera at the Federal High Court in Abuja, where he demanded the recusal of Justice Bintanyaku. But the court had ordered the secret police to lift the restriction while threatening to jail the DSS director, General, for refusal to adhere to its directive. Amid the blockade, Agocha had physically met with Kano on Thursday, 24th of October 2024, at the DSS facility in Abuja. After the meeting, the lawmaker said he had resolved the issue of restriction placed on Maze Namdekano. All right, welcome back. Uh, this report is coming from Maze Namdekano's legal team, who have reported that um, after some necessary procedures uh, and, from, and some help, uh, which were rendered by uh, the member of the House representing Ikuano North and South, Honorable Obi Agocha, that Kano was Kano's ban because Kano was banned from visiting anybody. The ban was lifted, and on my own part, I say hope is not another clout chasing uh, because I think I'm um, is either in 2021 or 2022 when Soludo came into office. Uh, Mazen and the Kano was his ladder to power uh, because when Kano said let there be peace in Anambra state even with all the uproar and chaos that was there in Anambra state uh, everywhere was calm uh, and that election favored Soludo uh, uh, immensely under the uh, party of Apoga and as it is uh, I don't know what Obia Gocha is up to if he's doing this thing uh, out of um, goodwill, that's fine. But if it is doing it, if he's doing it uh, in a bid to be able to achieve his political aim and full career, uh, I think um, that's uh, destructive because it's just a political act. A lot of these politicians has used Mazen and Kano to pave their own personal way. And it looks as if Kano has become their scapegoat or has become their way paper. And many of them, because of this, are making sure that he remains in the DSS detention. Because they know that uh, if Kano is there, uh, a lot of people will be protesting. And um, if they eventually uh, make ally with Kano, that will be able to, that will help in giving them uh, large followers uh, and the uh, rest of them. Donald Trump has promised a closed border and mass deportation. Those affected are taking action. <laughs> uh, the new president of America has promised that he's going to close a lot of borders. Remember that he was closing the border between Texas and the Texas border. Uh, we so for everybody where we say the day to the day for America illegally now we say your water loop has come. Uh, because Trump uh, has decided to change the narrative. Uh, Nine Trunko, uh, Biko, Ineme, 
Gemet Konebere. I see the B civil organization set up Sue's FCT minister yes on weekend demand immediate halt to Abuja demolition. <laughs> Uh, of course, you know that uh, they don't need to tell you that this present government is government of demolition, demolition. Uh, Soludo did it in, in Anambara. Uh, what is his name again? The one in Lagos, Sanwolu, is doing something in Lagos. And um, Wike is doing his own in Abuja, where he is the FCT minister. <laughs> They say that uh, you get some officers who will be saying that then they protect uh, foreign hackers on illegal duty. Oh, say Tiela. <laughs> now, they say they don't release some end bad government protector, protesters and the police has denied that they were tortured. Hmm. Oh, say Tiela. My brother, uh, anything where they do in this life, no not allow yourself to reach Nigeria police station. Uh, because those boys, uh, some of them, let me say some, are not well trained. Is it that they quite the couple of for an idea? Imagine when they are accusing you of something in Nigeria police station and they will even make you to confess to what you have not done before uh, because of the kind of torture and the way they are taking this torture. And that is not how it's supposed to be. Uh, nobody is guilty until proven. Uh, for you to say that someone is guilty, you have to prove that that person is guilty. So you use the move to off this thing, have you? Uh, off it now, switch. According to Eba, the letter detailed just justification on why the Biafra Declaration is a recipe for peace in Nigeria and Sahel region of Africa. The letter of intent informed the Finland president to support the Biafra Independent Declaration because it is a recipe for peace in the Sahel region, Eba wrote on his official X account. The government of Biafra is contacting you to inform you about the overall aims and goals of the Biafra Republic government in exile and its international legal personality and the pending restoration of the United States of Biafra under the auspice of an internationally recognized referendum to be concluded the last week of November 2024. Unlike other Sessionist governments in Africa before and since, Biafra was recognized by five United Nations member states. The letter reads in part. This comes amid the increased agitation for Biafra independence in the past years. EBA had announced that from November 29 to 3rd, 2024, Biafra independence will be declared in the convention in a convention in Finland. Record that Namde Kano, the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, has been under detention since 2021 over Biafra agitation. Efforts and appeal from several Igbo leaders for his freedom have not yielded fruit. All right, welcome back. Uh, this is a letter uh, written to the uh, Finland president, Stop by uh, Mazi Simon Eba the Prime Minister of the Biafra Republic government in exile as EDB. You know, Shele, uh, I think um, that EPA is actually taking this uh, movement very, very serious. Um, I, and I think that this is not like every other movement that have come before now uh, to liberate the, the indigenous people of Biafra. Uh, there has been a lot of movements. Ojuku came and go. Uh, Owazurike, who later joined the Nigeria party, and as if his own movement, the Masop, has now been registered under Nigeria. Uh, they are even doing security work everywhere. Masop members, uh, you can hire them to do security for you and the rest of them. And after that, a lot of people came up. People like him are powerful. And also, Emma Zinnan, the who started the 
the last part of the game, you know, that ignited uh, the fire of freedom, that was when a lot of Igbo people started speaking out. Uh, even some governmental parastatals supported, some governmental officials and the rest of them who were, you know, pioneering this thing on the ground. Even though there are some selfish politicians who knew that uh, if this happens to come to limelight, uh, that they are going to lose their political position. People like senators, governors, and the rest of them who are kicking against this thing from behind, uh, who are just fighting for their own personal interest. Even the office that have been given to them, the voted office they are occupying as the governors, the president, uh, the senators, they have, been, they have not been able to do anything for the masses. Yes, they have not been able to do anything good for the masses, because uh, as as far as as far as um uh, uh, what is it called? As far as Nigeria is concerned, as far as Biafra is concerned, the politicians we have have not been able to do any reasonable thing that have actually affected the life of the people. Nothing has been done in the interest of the masses. Imagine in. In, in a state in the northern part of Nigeria, where uh, the, the governor of that state said that they built, I think, how many boreholes with 1.2 billion naira. Only boreholes. Building of boreholes were done with 1.2 billion. And um, I think about 20 something boreholes or thereabout. And these politicians somehow, they, they feel that. Uh, Nigerians or the citizens that are under them, they are subjects, the populace, that these people are fools, that they are mumu, they don't even know what they are doing because uh, the way they are bringing out the, the, the expenditure, expecting us to accept these things wholeheartedly, expecting us to accept it hook, line, and sinker. I think um I think um it's 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 appalling. It's painful. It's very very painful, and that is why um a lot of people have decided that the movement that will bring about the actualization of the indigenous people of Biafra should be taken serious. Um, people like Simon Eba are making moves, making sure uh 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 uh, uh that these things come to pass. Meanwhile, let's go to another information as government don't buy people for one obodo like that. It uh, will be Enugu State. They say four government shot dead in Enugu State. Let's go down to the full detail of the information as I go to edition out to you one by one. Remember that that is my work here for you uh, to make sure that you get all the all the necessary information you need. As it be, security squad comprising the Nigerian Army, the police, and the DSS personnel also recovered a catchy of arms and ammunition from gunmen, while some of them fled into the bush with various degree of gunshot injuries. 